Hi everyone, I'm Ryan Huffman. Welcome to our two-part series on on-location lighting. Today we're going to cover on-camera flash. This is my flash I'm going to be using. Um, this is a flash point. A lot of flashes are pretty similar. One thing I do really want to, to cover though is that this flash is a TTL flash. Okay, that just means through the lens. It's kind of like automatic settings for a flash, which means that if you aim your flash directly at a subject, it will kind of figure out what flash power setting to use. That's great if you're going to aim it directly at a subject, but if you're not going to do that, then it's not going to be quite as effective. What I'm going to be showing you today is how to use it in manual mode instead of TTL mode. So if your flash has TTL mode, you want to make sure to go into the settings, however your flash is set up, and hit on this one I would hit mode until I saw a little M pop up there instead of TTL. That means I'm going to be doing manual mode and I'm going to be able to adjust that power setting uh, based on whatever I tell it to do. Remember, if you've got TTL, you probably want to turn it off for what we're doing. If you keep TTL on, it's not going to work for what we're doing today. Before we even go and start shooting uh, with our model, what we want to do is we want to observe our surroundings. That's very important. So we're shooting indoors today um, and we're doing that on purpose. Okay. So when we're shooting indoors, like let's say you're doing event photography, or maybe you're just covering something small, like a birthday party or something like that. You want to really look around the room and see what you're dealing with. What does your ambient light look like? Right? So ambient light just means whatever your available light already is in the room. In this room right now, you can see there's windows window light coming in. There aren't really any overhead lights on right now, but you're probably going to have to deal with something like fluorescent overhead lights. You're going to have different things going on. So you need to observe that and see, for instance, do I have a, enough window light that I don't need to use a flash? Well, then it might not matter. But most of the time, your eyes are kind of tricking you. So once I've looked around and I've checked out my lighting situation, then I want to check out my ceiling situation. Do I have a really tall ceiling? Uh, do I have a ceiling that is maybe off color in some way? Maybe it's, you know, w exposed wood beams or something. What we're looking for here, ideally, is if we have a white colored ceiling and if it's relatively low, then we have a lot to be able to play with. If we have a really tall ceiling, like a church or cathedral, we're going to have to do some different things there. But look at our ambient light look at our ceiling and then just look around for any surroundings like this room you can see behind me has like some wood paneling on the walls that's not going to be ideal if we aim a flash directly at our subject it's probably going to create a really hard highlight that bounces off of that wood paneling so if you have walls that have you know a bunch of mirrors or uh, pictures or something on it you have to watch out for that as well Joining us today, I've got my awesome model Hunter back here, and we're just gonna take a look and see what the available light is doing right now to her face. I'm just gonna take a shot with just the available light, right? No flash, so we can see kind of what we're dealing with. What we're seeing here with uh, this available light shot is, you know, at first blush, it looks like it's pretty good lighting. And honestly, it is pretty decent lighting. We got a lot of window light coming in, but here's the big caveat. In order for us to get the proper amount of exposure on her to get this nice shot, my settings are 1 80th of a second, because if I go too much lower, I might get some image blur in there. F2.8, luckily this lens actually opens up to F2.8, but then my ISO, I had to crank all the way up to 4,000. So that's kind of a problem, right? I don't want to use high ISO uh, for a shot of a, a portrait because high ISO can tend to kind of separate and kind of make the skin look blotchy and have some problems there. So the available light looks good, but we have that big problem of having to change our settings around quite a bit. Let's just see what we can do with the on-camera flash to kind of fix some of those problems. Typically, whenever you um, get a shoe mount flash like this, a lot of people think, you know, the, the typical way you see it used is what I call paparazzi style, right? So you just put your, your flash on there and you just aim it directly at the subject, kind of like this. So remember, we're on manual settings, so you just want to get it dialed in kind of where you feel like you're most comfortable. What we can see in this first shot where we're aiming the flash directly at our model is kind of some 
really strong highlights. You know, if we kind of zoom in there, you can see what it really does is it kind of uh, flattens out highlights on the subject's face, kind of washes her skin out quite a bit also. And then you can see back in the background, we're ha we have some highlights on that wood paneling that I was talking about that are pretty distracting. Overall, this, this image works as far as like it captured the subject, but it doesn't do it in a very pleasing manner. So this is something that we typically kind of want to avoid. But on the positive side, we can see that just by using the flash, I've been able to bring my ISO all the way down to 200. So now I'm not gonna have a noise problem, but the lighting isn't gonna be ideal. The next technique we can try, so what we're doing is we're building up, right? We're trying to figure out how to get the best looking lighting. Um, so the next technique we can try is very simply pointing your flash up. So in this room, we're lucky we have a relatively low ceiling and it's white, okay? So that's what we're gonna go ahead and do. We're just gonna point our flash directly up and see what we can get with that. When your flash is not pointed directly at your subject, you need to increase your power by about one full stop. So I've already increased it there. So now looking at this lighting, you can see this is much more pleasant. This is much more pleasing on the model. Right now, the big thing we notice, we don't have those highlights back in the background popping off the wood paneling. If we look at her face, those highlights are much softer. Her skin tone looks much more accurate. It's not completely washed out and white looking. And we've just, in general, got some really nice shadowing kind of under her chin there. We have a lot of separation under her nose, on her cheekbones, all of that has good separation. The only problem here is that when we look into her eyes there, we have a little bit of shadowing happening, right? So that's something that we can easily get around with one addition to what we're doing here. For this third technique, you can see I still have my flash aimed directly up, but now I've added something. So this is just a white card. It could be a piece of card stock, an index card, even a business card could work for this, as long as it's just pure white. Some flashes have one of these built in, this one does not. So what I've done is I've just taken a piece and I just simply taped it there. What this is gonna do is a little bit of this light is gonna now bounce off of this back onto the subject to kind of illuminate the face just a little bit more. So sometimes when you do this, you might have to decrease your power just a little bit, maybe like a third stop. Now we can see when we look at this image, we've popped just a little bit more light into the subject's face, especially on the, the far eye, the one that's getting a little more shadow in the previous image. Uh, this one is getting a little more highlights in there and it just kind of nicely illuminates her face a little bit better. This is gonna work differently on different people, right? Some people are gonna have more deep set eyes and some people are have more shallow set eyes. For people with deep set eyes, this is gonna work wonders. It's gonna push a lot of light in there and clear up a lot of those shadows. Those are some techniques just to make sure you get a good exposure and get an even lighting on your subject. But if we want to really kind of test our artistic boundaries, we can use a couple of new techniques to get more creative. So now what I want to show you is how we can maybe do a couple of uh, really common portrait lighting setups, Rembrandt and Paramount lighting. Rembrandt lighting is characterized by having a little triangle of light on uh, the cheek of the subject. So let me show you how we can get that with just an on-camera flash. In order to get Rembrandt light with just an on-camera flash, we kind of have to be creative with what we do with our flash. Almost all shoe mount flashes should have this ability to be able to twist around and go up and down like this. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna kind of twist it back behind us a little bit and angle it up. You don't have to mimic this exactly, but you do kind of want to just twist it to one side or the other and angle it up towards your, your ceiling. Another thing I'm gonna do to be able to get Rembrandt a little bit easier is I'm gonna have my model, instead of looking directly at me, I'm gonna have my model push their chin just a little bit, either to the left or right. It's gonna be opposite of where I have the light angled. So I have my light angled to my model's left side or to the camera left side. So what I'm gonna have my model do is push their chin to the camera right side. So Hunter's already got that set up for us here. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look and see what we've got. Looking at this image, 
we can really key in there and see that we've got just this really soft, subtle um, triangle over on the on the camera right side of uh, Hunter's face there on her cheek. That can just kind of, you know, amplify your photography game, your lighting game a little bit when you can start to learn these different lighting techniques. And it gives her face, you know, a different type of form and dimension to look at it with the Rembrandt lighting on there. Let's show you how to do Paramount lighting. Paramount lighting is characterized by a butterfly shaped outline of a shadow on the top lip of the subject that's caused by the nose. For Paramount lighting, what we're going to do is, this is a little bit easier, we're just going to angle our light directly behind us and up towards the ceiling. Okay. If you don't have a low ceiling, you can use like a reflector. If you had a handheld reflector, you can hold that up to mimic a ceiling. But in this case, we've got a good ceiling, so we can do that. Just like with previous lighting setups uh, I talked about, as long as that light's not angled directly at the person, if it's angled away, you're probably gonna need to increase that power. It's really gonna vary what you're doing, but I've went ahead and increased my power just a little bit here. And now another thing to be able to get good paramount lighting is sometimes you might have your, your subject bring their chin down just a little bit, not too far, but just a little bit, and that'll help make that paramount that much more apparent. In this image, what we can see here is it really clearly defines the jawline of the subject. It helps define the cheekbones and it helps give a little bit of a shadow underneath the nose that falls down onto the lip a little bit. In more pronounced um, examples of Paramount, that shadow would be uh, more steep or more graded. And Something to do that, we could kind of bring our light up a little bit higher or angle it with a, a reflector or something like that. But this still gives us that overall Paramount look. Paramount is also called butterfly lighting because it creates a little bit of a outline underneath the subject's nose onto their top lip. And we can see that starting to form here a little bit in this shot. Your limits are your imagination from there. I hope you found this insightful. Please make sure to subscribe so you don't miss part two on location lighting off camera flash. Dance, magic dance. This next, this third technique, have like weird, like calm, like right on your mouth. So like, <laughs> hold on, just like kind of give like a slow <laughs> turn. Tail is old as. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> you should watch our videos, but like just fast forward, just fast forward to the end. Okay.